22 grams of copper pellets are removed from a 300 degree Celsius oven and immediately dropped into 120 milliliters of water at 25 degrees Celsius in an insulated cup. What will the new temperature be? So let's make a list since they gave us a whole lot of information. So we know that there are the mass, we'll say mass of Cu for copper is 22 grams, which is equal to 0 0.022 kilograms. They tell us the, or I don't think they tell us, but if we look it up in the book, the specific heat of copper is 385 joules per kilogram times Kelvin. And then the temperature uh, initially is 300 degrees Celsius for them. And then we wanna know what the, the final temperature is gonna be for the water. So we're going to assume in this question that they reach equilibrium and so the copper and the water will be the same temperature. So the temperature initial for the copper is 300 degrees Celsius. Adding 273 to that, we get 573 Kelvin. Okay, I think that's it for the copper, so let's do the water real quick. They tell us the mass of the water is, or they only tell us the volume, 120 milliliters. But we know that one milliliter is essentially equal to one gram. So we have 120 grams of water in this case, which is 0 0.12 kilograms. They tell us the initial temperature, or let's do specific heat first, specific heat of water. That is 4190 joules per kilogram times K. And then they tell us um, now's the initial temperature of water. Um, water is 25 degrees Celsius, which is 298 Kelvin. All right, so thinking about this question, we know that energy is gonna be conserved. So whatever energy we start out with, we have to end up with. So in other words, what we're saying is we could find Q for copper and we could find Q for water and whatever value we, we get for that has to equal the final Q for copper and the final Q for water. So let's write that out. So we have Q initial for copper plus whatever the Q initial is for water has to equal Q final for, I did water on both those, this is copper over here. Oh no, that looks like a W, but it's Cu. Okay, C u plus the final q for water so um, since we're talking about um, temperature changes for both of these it's both going to be mcat so we'll have mc delta t for copper plus mc delta t for water is going to equal mc delta t for copper and M C delta T for water. But we talked about how the final temperature, or I put um, delta on all these, it's delta, but let me, actually I need to go ahead and change that. So now we won't have delta on all these. This will be mass times C times the initial temperature of copper, mass times C, the initial temperature of water equals mass times C times the final temperature of water and MC times the final temperature of water. Okay, there we go. Now, whenever we, um, now we can solve for the final temperature. So since they're, what I was saying there, the final temperature is gonna be the same for everything. Now we can factor out the final temperature. So we'll have MC times the initial temperature of copper plus mc times the initial temperature of water is going to equal mc of water uh, copper plus mc of water and that is all going to equal the final temperature because it's the same so now we can divide both sides by mc for both copper and water so we'll have mc t initial copper 
plus MC T initial water divided by MC copper plus MC of water. And that will all equal the final temperature. Let's scroll down again and plug in all of our values. So the, uh, the mass of the water we, we know is 0 0.022 kilograms. Okay, so we have the mass of copper, which we said was 0. Point, was it 0 0.022 or just 2, 2? 0 0.022 at 573. 0 0.022 kilograms times the specific heat, which was 385. 385 joules per kilogram Kelvin times um, 573 yeah 573 Kelvin okay now we're going to add the MCAT of water we said the water was 0 0.012 kilograms and the specific heat is 4190 And then we're going to multiply that by the initial temperature, which was 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, now we're going to divide all of this by the mass of the copper, which was 0 0.22 times its specific heat, 385 joules per kgk. And then we're going to add the mass of the water was 0 0.012 kilograms times its specific heat of 4190 joules per kilogram times Kelvin. All right, and all that is equal to the final temperature of the copper and the water since they reach equilibrium. So when plugging that in, T final is now equal to 302.56 Kelvin but we want it in degrees Celsius, so we minus 273, and we get 29.56 degrees Celsius, or 30 degrees Celsius.